Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning here at St. John Lutheran Church. And a special welcome to all of you those to all. Special welcome to those of you joining us online. Welcome. Uh, inside our worship bulletin, you should find this. It's a connect card. It's contact information on the front. Next steps of faith on the back. Please take a moment, fill that out. You can drop it into the offering plate later on in the service. Now, if you have someone that you'd like us to pray for as part of our worship service today, in the pews in front of you, you'll find these yellow prayer cards. Please go ahead and fill that out now. You can hand it to the ushers during the singing of this uh, first hymn. We will bring it up to us so we can pray for your loved one as part of our service today. So a couple of uh, quick announcements. I wanted to talk about the Easter egg extravaganza. And we're collecting uh, plastic eggs and fillings for those. So if you'd like, you can pick up some eggs out there and bring it back all filled up. Uh, and also, we're still planning to have worship next week. Now, more about this in the sermon. But as of right now, we are still planning to gather for worship next week. And if that uh, proves to be the case, we're, we're asking you to help us out with our online church directory. So it's really easy. What you do is you show up for worship that day. Uh, you go out into the lobby where we'll have a photo station set up. And we'll take your picture, take your mugshot to connect your name to your face. Now, this is not what people will see. Right in the directory, they're not going to see this mugshot. What they'll actually see is just your pretty little face right there. But this is a whole lot better than what we currently have, which is just a, an empty square. So please help us. Uh, if, assuming we do have worship next week, please do help us and let us take your picture so people can know who you are. Now, a couple of announcements specifically about how we're doing church uh, this week. First of all, when it comes to the passing of the peace, just as we did last time, you know, please don't touch each other. Just wave or finger guns or fist bump or elbow bump or something. But please, you know, keep your, uh, keep your distance when you pass the peace with each other. And also, you can see that we have set up hand sanitizers here at the head of each aisle. If you should choose, if you should choose to come forward for communion, you don't have to. But if you should choose to come forward for communion, we simply ask that you please sanitize your hands on the way up, so that everybody's hands are clean as we receive the wafers. So those are all the announcements we've had. We've come to worship, and let us pray. Lord God Almighty, we thank you, and we praise you for this day which you've given to us. God, we thank you for this opportunity to come and to gather as your people. Lord Jesus, come. Lord Jesus, move among us in the power of your Holy Spirit. Let us sing your praise and worship you, Lord, let us hear your word to us and respond with faith. And Jesus, let us receive you in the sacrament. God, we pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Our service this morning begins with a brief order of confession and forgiveness, which is found on the screen above us. Please stand as you are willing and need. <laughs> We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have acknowledged the sin, and we do not fear ourselves. We need us to against you, God, word, and deed, by all the undone deeds of our hearts, and by all the undone hearts. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, forgive us, forgive us. Thank you. 
Almighty God, in His mercy, has given His Son to die for us and for His sake, forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by His authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share peace this time. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
pray. O God, our Defender, storms rage about us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair, deliver your sons and daughters from fear, and preserve us all from unbelief. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our lesson this morning is Psalm 91. You who live in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. You will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, or the arrow that flies by day, the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you. No scourge shall come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all of your ways, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the, the young lion and the serpent, you will trample underfoot. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. With long life I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I preach this morning in the name of God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So our sermon series for this Lent is taking a look at uh, Holy Week, which is the last week of Jesus' life. But we are stepping away, stepping aside from our sermon series this week, because of all that has happened in the last week. The coronavirus is spreading fast, and fear about the coronavirus is spreading even faster, and that's what I want to preach about today, is fear. Trusting God in a time like this, trusting God in a time of fear. Our lesson today is Psalm 91. It's found on page 477 in the Pew Bible. Psalm 91, for those of you at home, I invite you to open up and follow along. And Psalm 91 should be very familiar to many of you because the opening verses of this psalm are the first verse of that well-known and beloved hymn on eagle's wings that we'll be singing later on today. Now, I chose this psalm because Psalm 91 is all about trusting God and living with God in the time of fear, a time of fear and infectious disease. Let's take a look. It's page 477, Psalm 91, verse 1. You who live in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. You will say to the Lord, my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And that's the key to the whole thing. That's the key to the whole psalm that verse. Is that we can trust God. My God in whom I trust. And why can we trust him at times like these? Because he will deliver us. Verse 3. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Now pestilence that's an old-fashioned word which means plague or virulent, infectious, epidemic disease. And God's promise is that he will deliver us from the pestilence. He will deliver us from the infectious disease. Verse 3, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions. Under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. God promises to deliver us and to protect us in times like these. 
to deliver us and protect us from the deadly pestilence, from the infectious disease, so that we need not fear. Verse 5. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day, the pestilence that stalks in darkness or the destruction that wastes at noon. You see, in addition to the pestilence itself, in addition to the infectious disease itself, there is the fear that accompanies it, the fear that goes before it. And God's promise is that he will deliver us from them both from the pestilence and the fear about it, from the infectious disease and the fear about it, God promises to deliver and protect us from them both. You will not fear the terror of the night. When you wake up in the night wondering what might happen and, what, and where all of this will go, you will not fear the arrow that flies by day that pierces your heart, that anxiety that pierces your heart every time you check up on the latest breaking news. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day, the pestilence that stalks in darkness, the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. So the overarching message of this song is that we can trust God. We can trust God in times like these. We can trust God in times of pestilence. We can trust God in times of infectious disease because God has promised to deliver us. God has promised to protect us. And so we can trust Him. We do not need to fear. But underneath this overarching message of trust, there is also a warning not to put God to the test. Verse 11. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And you know who famously said those words? The devil. These are the very verses of Scripture that the devil quoted to Jesus when the devil tempted him in the wilderness and said to him, If you are the Son of God, well, throw yourself down from this temple, for it is written that he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all of your ways, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Don't you trust your Father, Jesus? Well, then throw yourself down. And what did Jesus say to him? You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. God has promised to deliver us. God has promised to protect us. But God's promises of deliverance and protection do not mean that we can go and do foolish and presumptuous things like go throwing ourselves off a building. God has promised to protect us in times like these, in times of pestilence, in times of infectious disease. We can trust Him in times like these, but we must not put Him to the text by going and taking foolish and presumptuous headlong risks and assuming that God will bail us out. And the coronavirus is a risk. It is a real risk. Now, on the one hand, it's not that bad for most people who get it. 80% of the people who get the coronavirus will suffer mild flu-like symptoms at worst and be over in a matter of days. So on the one hand, it's not that bad for most people who get it. But on the other hand, it is very bad for some people. For those with existing underlying medical conditions, especially respiratory or immune diseases, and especially for those who are older or elderly, for them it is very bad. This last week, the World Health Organization estimated that the mortality rate for the coronavirus is 3.4%. Now that's been revised downward in the last few days, down to 2 or even 1%. And yet in China, the mortality rate for those who are 70 or older jumped up to 
And the mortality rate for those who are 80 or over jumped up to 15%. It's not all that bad for most people, but for some people it is very bad. And for all people, it is highly contagious, which means the best thing you can do for yourself and for everyone else is to take care of yourself. Take care of yourself and take preventative measures. Just like you would with the flu. Wash your hands well and frequently. Do not touch your face. Keep a distance between you and other people. Cover your mouth when you cough or sneeze. Stay home if you're sick. Stay home if you're at risk. The single best thing you can do for yourself and for other people at this time is to take preventative measures. Now, I know that this last year I put a really strong emphasis on coming to worship weekly. <laughs> But I don't want you to do that at the risk of your own health. So please, if you are at all worried, if you are at all at risk, please don't come to church. Just stay home. You do what those people are doing up there. Join us online. Because our 1045 worship service, this service is live streamed every week, simply Join us online. If you are at all worried, if you are at all at risk, please stay home and join us online because we will be here until the authorities ask us not to be. If the time should ever come when the state of Texas or Kendall County asks us to no longer gather in large, greeting, large groups like this, well then we will be good citizens and we will do what they ask of us and we will move all of our worship online. But until that time comes, the plan, as of this moment, is to continue to meet. Continue to meet. Taking all the necessary and prudent precautions. Already last week we eliminated the shaking of hands during the passing of peace. This week we're asking you to first sanitize your hands before you come forward for communion to receive the wafer. We've already eliminated the food and fellowship time in the family center. In the days and in the weeks to come, we will take other necessary and prudent precaution measures as, as we need to, up to and including maybe even no longer having church at all. And we'll let you know. We will let you know, but you, please, take care of yourself. Amen. Thank you. So those are the numbers. Now those are the known facts about the coronavirus, about what it is, how it spreads, and what you can do about it to help yourself and to help others. Those are the known facts about the coronavirus. But I think what really troubles us are not the known facts, but the unknown fears about the coronavirus, about what it means for us and for our loved ones and for our lives. And from where I look, I see five fears, five fears facing us in this season of the coronavirus scare. And the first is the fear of sickness. What happens if I get the coronavirus? What happens if I get sick? Take care of yourself. Go to the doctor. Do what your doctor tells you to do and trust in God. Trust in God. In your worship books, you'll find these little prayer cards. I ask you to take these prayer cards home with you and put these prayer cards something where they're always right at hand. Maybe that's in your wallet or in your Bible for your morning devotions or maybe up on your refrigerator or on the kitchen table. But put this prayer card someplace where you know where it is and whenever Whenever you feel that fear rising up within you again, take this prayer card and pray it out loud to the Lord. When I am afraid, I will trust in you, in God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I will not be afraid. For that's how you live in a time of fear, by putting your trust in Him. I trust in God in a time of fear. Fear of sickness, and related to that, the fear of death. 
And here the key is to trust in God and prepare. Because death is coming for us all, sooner or later, whether we want it to or not. So are you prepared for it? Are you ready? Have you put your faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Are you ready to stand before the judgment seat and give God a reckoning for how you have lived your life? Have you confessed your sins and misdeeds and transgressions to the Lord and asked Jesus to take them away from you? If you have never asked God to come and be the Lord of your life, if you have never asked Jesus to be the Savior of your soul, well, do it now. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. And he promises not only to hear you, but he promises to save you. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die, says Jesus. So are you ready? Are you ready for death yourself? And what about your loved ones? Have you made things ready for them? Have you made a will or a statement? Is it up to date and in good order? Is it kept someplace where your, your family knows where it is, along with all of the other information they will need at your passing, like your insurance policies and your bank accounts and your passwords and so on? Does your family know your wishes for your funeral? Death is coming for us all, sooner or later, at one time or another. Don't fear it. Trust in God and prepare for it. So the fear of death is the second fear I see in this season. The third fear is the fear of isolation. The fear of isolation through quarantine, whether that's self-chosen or imposed upon us by others. And this is the fear of being cut off. Being cut off from other people, being left all alone, but know this, though you may be cut off from other people, yet you can never be cut off from God. He is always with you, so in this time, turn to Him and trust in Him and spend time with Him. When I am afraid, I will trust in you, in God, whose word I trust. And if you find yourself in isolation with nothing but time on your hands, then take that time to spend that time with the Lord. Open up his word. Read what he says. Reflect on what he says to you and respond to him in prayer. Do not fear being alone. Because God is with you. So turn to him, trust in him, and take the time to spend time with him. Now, for those of us who are not likely to be in isolation, we need to remember that the people who are most likely to be in isolation are the ones who can least afford to be isolated. People with existing and serious medical conditions. People in their 70s, 80s, and especially those in their 90s. People who are already widows or widowers. People who have no friends, no family here in the area. Those are the people who are already isolated. Those are the people who will be isolated even further in this season of fear. So who in your life do you know is like that? Reach out to them. Reach out to them. Connect with them. Even if it's only over the phone and not in person. Connect with them. Ask what you can do to serve them at a time like this. Maybe take them out to pick up their groceries or medications. Maybe even pick up their groceries and medications for them. Jesus commands us to love our neighbor, connect consistently. That's the first step to loving your neighbor. Who do you know who is in isolation? Be a neighbor to them. Because no one wants to be alone. No one wants to be alone, and especially in a season of fear like this. Fear of isolation, that's the third one I see. The fourth, fear of financial loss. The stock market dropped, what, 20% this last week? We have all lost a lot of money. And no one knows what that means. 
We know that we've, the stock market has plunged and that once the stock market plunges, the economy is sure to take a hit. What does that mean for you? What does that mean for your job? What does that mean for your retirement? What does that mean for your investments? What does that mean for our economic recovery? None of us knows for certain, but we're all afraid of the worst. And when I am afraid, I will trust in you. The stock market may rise and fall, but let me tell you something, God's love for you never does. God's love for you is constant. God's love for you is unchanging. God's love for you is unfailing. And so trust in Him and turn to Him because He has provided for you to this point in your life. And God will provide for you going into the future. So trust in Him. Be thankful for what you still have. And remember, you have been here before. In the dot-com bust of the early 2000s, in the financial crisis of 2008, things always come back, things always recover. It just takes time. So trust in God. Be patient. And do not panic. Which brings me to the fifth and final fear, and that is fear itself. And in my humble opinion, this one is by far the worst, simply because there is no accounting for it. I mean, a panic, by definition, a panic is unreasonable, a panic is irrational, a panic is unpredictable. There is a nationwide rush on toilet paper. What does toilet paper have to do with a respiratory illness? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. But that's the nature of panics. They don't make sense. Fear takes over and fear takes control. Don't let fear take control of you. Now, we are all caught up in this thing together. It's like a hurricane has blown in and we're all boats in the harbor bobbing up and down on the same waves. There's nothing you can do but simply ride this thing out. But you don't have to take on water in the process. We cannot control the fear sweeping across the nation and around the world. We cannot control the fear that is emptying the shelves all around us, but you don't have to let fear control you. When I am afraid, I will not let fear have control of me. When I am afraid, I will trust in you, in God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, and I will not be afraid, because fear is of the enemy. And fear is what the enemy, fear is what the devil uses to drive you away from God and to separate from you, you from him. Trust is what brings you back. And so when I am afraid, I will trust in you, in God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I will not be afraid. Make this your prayer in this season of fear. Now, none of us saw this season come. None of us knows how long this season will last, but we all know that life will be different, very different, at least for the next month or two. Take care of yourself. Play it safe. Reach out to others. Keep track of them. And most of all, trust in God. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. And make this your prayer in this season of fear. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, we thank you. God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather as your people at this time in the midst of this season. Jesus, we thank you for your word. There are depths and treasures to your word, Lord Jesus. There is something for every time and season, and Lord Jesus, you have spoken to us in this season of you. Father, I pray, not only for every person gathered here in this sanctuary right now, but for all who are watching now online, all who will watch in the days to come, Lord God, I pray that when they feel fear rising up, that they might take this card out, pray it, 
and that your word for them shall become truth to them, that they will not be afraid because they trust in you. Lord Jesus, that is your will, and let your will be done. Amen? Amen. Amen. And if you would please, stand as you are willing and able, as at this time our service continues with our confession of faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten.
Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Therefore, all who believe in Christ who have been baptized into him are welcome to come forward and receive his body and blood. Communion will be by intention, and just as a word of reminder, please use the, the cleanser first and follow the directions of the ushers. Communion assistants, please come forward. Would communion assistant also please use the disinfectant first?
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. serve the Lord. Amen.